Hello, welcome to the Eclectic Reader. Listen to great books and stories while you use your eyes and hands for other things. Now here's your host, Madison Mason. Hi there, it's Madison Mason. I'm so glad you've chosen to tune in to the Eclectic Reader. We plan to bring you many different kinds of great stories and novels that you just might not ever get around to reading yourself in this busy, multitasking world of ours. An eclectic assortment of readings from many different sources for your eclectic mind. We're starting the series with The Gray Quarry Boys, a colorful novel of life in mid-century rural America. We'd love to hear what you think of the characters and stories you're hearing. You can find out how to contact us at the end of this episode. Enjoy. The Gray Quarry Boys Chapter 1 The Letter Gray Quarry High School, 1743 Wood Road, Gray Quarry, North Carolina January 6, 1957 Millicent Broughton, Head of English Studies, Gray Quarry High School, Gray Quarry, North Carolina Theodore, I am extremely disappointed in this paper. This is not at all what I assigned the class. I ask for a simple story illustrating daily life in our community, which most of the students successfully completed over the past semester. But from you I received instead this rambling, dreadfully incoherent text replete with unsavory language and extremely inappropriate personal anecdotes, which I can only ascribe to an overactive adolescent imagination. Clearly, you have hoarded these unpleasant stories for some time. Although I must acknowledge your efforts as an attempt at creative writing, I am thoroughly saddened at such tasteless results. I'm returning your paper ungraded and expect you to hand in the proper assignment by Friday or find yourself in serious danger of failing this course again. Young man, this is your last warning. Most sincerely, Millicent Broughton. The Book so here's what got old lady Broughton wound up so tight. The Blackhawks by Theodore Ragazzo. That's me, Teddy Ragazzo. Okay, so I never wrote a book in my life. BFD. But when I take you back over all that's happened, you're going to see why these people are stuck in my head. I guess I want to tell you all this mainly because nobody else is gonna, and it should be said. So what the hell? Here goes. I'm Teddy Ragazzo. Your typical badass, ducktail, rock and roll and merc driving teen outlaw that we're all trying to be. I don't give a fuck about Grey Quarry, but it haunts my thoughts and it forces me to tell you these stories. So I'm here to describe these strangers, so bear with me. I do it for them. I don't fit in and I can't wait to get out. My old man got transferred from Philly down to Grey Quarry to head up the truck and it granted out of the quarries before they all shut down. My old man hates it too, but he's connected to the boys in the business. And like the army, you get orders, you follow them. So here we are in the South in the 50s. Now Elvis, Jerry Lee Lewis, Fats Domino, Little Richard, Chuck Berry, they're all putting rock and roll together. And I'm stuck in this backwoods nowhere farm town with a bunch of hicks. But pretty soon I figured out there was a lot more going on than I knew about. And what I'm telling you, I learned from shutting up and asking a lot of questions. Okay, a little history. In 1929, and for the next decade, there was a financial depression in this country. Huge. It affected every citizen and non-citizen in the land, brought on by the collapse of the stock market. Overnight, fortunes were lost, businesses crashed, jobs disappeared, lives and families were destroyed, yada, yada, yada. Deprivation lay upon the land, baby. Now, the crash was manufactured by pure greed. Too many trying to get too much with too little, and the deal fell apart. Everybody suffered, except the rich. They never suffer. This was man's doing, not nature's. Man conceived the idea. Man bought. Man sold. Man wanted. Man got. Man lost. Man suffered. Man fucked the duck. A solution to the crisis came through more of man's scheming, but not from man himself. Nature saved his puny ass. The solution came from billions of years before man, possibly from light years away, who knows. Okay, after the crash, the government realized that measures had to be taken to stave off famine. The masses were hungry. That meant revolution was brewing in an American vat of suffering. People were talking mutiny, revolt communism. Hey, men had to be put to work. 
So the Roosevelt administration set up programs back in the 30s to employ the workforce, rebuild the economy and the government. Federal and municipal buildings would be constructed across all the nation. Roads would be built and paved. Bridges and tunnels created, all from steel and stone, all to last forever, to the glory of good old America. Oh, beautiful, for la 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 la. So they say billions of years ago, this earth was a soft spinning blob of gases and minerals. Space storms filled with giant chunks of other exploded bodies tore through the same orbit used by our planet. These storms were colossal in size, beyond imagination. Even Hollywood can't make a storm look that powerful. How long these galactic hurricanes streak through immeasurable space, nobody can accurately guess, like I said, light years. But they slammed into this soft planet with an immense force for eons, blam, 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 pummeling, peppering it, embedding its tender skin with huge granite deposits, like the worst case of zits in history. Eons later, during the Depression, our government discovered in the pine woods of the Carolinas huge masses of this building material. Land was cheap and available, people simple, dumb, and in need of money. So the New Deal was struck, and the government set out to create jobs and quarry these rock deposits, some of which were so large they could provide work for decades. Carving the stone was simple, too. Crews blasted out huge blocks of the material and trucked it away to be shaved down in mills. As the top was cut away, the true size of the deposit was revealed, and the crews began cutting around and round down into the heart of the rock. Some of these quarries reached miles around and hundreds of feet deep. Roads around the edges descended to the bottom where giant cranes lifted blocks of stone onto trucks to be carted off, carved into shapes to build the great new America. Shacks and barracks for the men lined the floors of these quarries. Toilets, tool sheds, kitchens, stores, garages, and repair shops. Entire communities were built. Life existed beneath the earth in giant holes. Finally, the boys would dig so far down that the deposit gave out and they hit bottom. Underground springs or rivers appeared and water seeped into the pits. They pumped it up and out onto the surface as long as they could keep digging. But the more they dug, the more springs they hit, the faster the water came. And finally, a quarry would start to fill up and have to be abandoned. Over the years, many quarries filled to the lips, becoming gigantic pools of clear spring water, hundreds of feet deep in the middle of the woods. They're wild places now, beautiful and dangerous. A generation later, after the Second World War, these places are play yards for all the local guys. We stand on the granite cliffs and see the old quarry shacks and rusted cranes and trucks at the bottom under hundreds of feet of dark water. We eat wild grapes and blackberries that grow on the perimeter. We dive off the cliffs in the burning sunlight to the cold water below. Forbidden. Illegal. Dangerous and cool as hell. We're the guys who hang out there. We call ourselves the Black Hawks, the Great Quarry Boys. This here, these are some of our stories. We hope you have enjoyed this episode of The Eclectic Reader. Please go on to the next numbered episode to continue. Also, check us out on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. If you'd like to help support the project, you can donate under Madison Mason at Patreon. And please, check out our website, kltkrdr.com, for more information. Hi, this is Madison Mason. I want to personally thank you for listening to The Eclectic Reader and invite you to share your experience, your thoughts, and your suggestions. We have many great books lined up for the future, but if you have requests for anything that is in the public domain, please email us at kltkrdr at gmail.com. kltkrdr at gmail.com